Hey guys, so it's dinner time. Kelly loves cooking. So Kelly's gonna make dinner and I'm gonna do my best to film. I hope you enjoy. My bread flour bag ripped, so we're gonna have to be super careful here. What do you use? That sunfish? Right now we're just going to slowly add flour until we get the consistency that we want. Usually it's somewhere between three and a half cups to four and a half cups, depending on how humid it is out. It depends on your, in, depends it, on your location where you are in an RV. Yeah. So the way I, I found that when we're in Colorado, I tend to use a lot less flour than say when we're in Florida or in Southern Texas where it's a lot more humid. Um, today I expect we'll probably use closer to the four and a half cups, but we'll see. This is a lot easier with a KitchenAid mixer. I'm looking forward to being able to go and pick that up from where we have it in storage. Jackson, does it seem to come up? See how it's still sticking to my hands? It's still a little too sticky. We're trying to get it more of a less sticky consistency. But you don't want to get so much flour in there that it's not sticky at all. Otherwise, you're going to have super dense rolls. Baby, this isn't for baby. Again, much easier with a KitchenAid mixer or any stand mixer brand that you have. I've also found that this technique is a lot easier to end up putting too much flour in than with a KitchenAid mixer. See how it's getting to the point where it's not quite sticking to my hands as much, but it still is sticking slightly. This is a lot closer to the consistency that you want. Object is to get it all one consistency because I still have some spots that are still chunked together from the flour. sticky but not sticking to me really that's the consistency you're looking for where it pulls together but it's no longer a spider webby sticky this is a one hour recipe so this is only going to rise for about 15 minutes and then we're going to make it into the shape of rolls 
and then it'll rise for another 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll pop it in the oven. Um, because it is an RV oven, it will take a little bit longer to cook, um, but that's just the nature of the beast when cooking in an RV. So now that the bread is rising, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the meatballs. I've got about a pound of ground beef. I save my ends from my bread to make my meatballs instead of using panko crumbs or whatever. Um, but I found that this is a good way to use up the ends that nobody use it, eats in our house. Use about three to four, depending on how thin or thick they happen to be sliced. And you want it to go down pretty small pieces. That's pretty close consistency. Still have a few bigger chunks, but it's small enough for what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and I'll add the cheese and the parsley and some salt. So this is Italian style cheese. Um, I like this one because it has all the different ones already in it. Um, it's got mozzarella, provolone, Parmesan, Romano, uh, Fontina, and Asiago. This bag has four cups of cheese in it. I probably will use about half of it. The other half of the bag gets Yeah, I was just going to say. And the other half of the bag we will use on top of the spaghetti when we plate it. I don't know that this is open. It's not. Mm, go ahead and do it now before I put the lid on. I use probably about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of dried parsley. Salt. Salt is right here. Use about a half a teaspoon of salt. And then normally I would put pepper in here as well, but I am out. Now it's just a matter of incorporating everything together. Once I've done that, I will probably add about a tablespoon or two of milk to it. And then it'll be time to make them into meatballs. You can also add an egg instead of the milk if you prefer. Now that it's all completely incorporated together um, is when I will add a little bit of milk. Joshua, go ahead and pour in a very small amount. I just need a couple tablespoons. Stop. Thank you. This is just so that it's not as dry. Cassie, look at this. Like no. I said, you can either, you can, all right guys, like I said, you can also use egg in the mixture at this point instead of milk if you prefer or if you don't have milk and have eggs. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. We're going to get the water started on the stovetop because it does take a little bit longer to boil in an RV. And then we're going to move back to the bread, make the rolls into the roll form. I'm going to go ahead and cook a full pound of pasta for our family of six. Okay, so if you don't know this about your um, RV stovetop, the front burner actually is a hotter burner than the back two. I don't know the exact terminology for that, but this one gets hotter faster than the back two. So I'm going to go ahead and start the water on the front burner while I don't have the meatballs going yet. And then we'll move this pot to the back and put the meatballs up here once I get to that point. Sure. So you definitely want to grease your pan with something. Um, I used to grease it with Crisco. Uh, I use salted butter now. We've your preference. Bacon. I've used baking grease. I've used olive oil. I mean, anything works. Just make sure it's greased really well. Usually I use a glass nine by 13 for this recipe and it's actually what it calls for. Um, since we just got this RV about a week ago, um, I haven't gone and gotten my nine by 13 and I'm not willing to go buy something that I already own. So um, until then I'm using this and it still works. Um, guys, quiet. It still works just fine. Um, 
the rolls might turn out a little bit more dense this way, but they're good. And they're a little bit crispier because it's a metal pan instead of a glass pan, but it works. So make sure it's super well greased. You don't want your roll sticking to your pan, especially in an RV oven because it's going to get a little bit crispier on the bottom. Just the nature of how an RV oven bakes. I'm going to go ahead and get the excess grease on my fingers. I don't know why you're doing that. <laughs> All right, so your goal on size with these is to get slightly bigger than a golf ball. So not too small, but also not too much bigger than your golf ball. It's a large golf ball. Bigger than a golf ball. Like I said, it's not a golf ball, it's bigger. <sighs> Ideally, you want these to be pretty close in size. I am not the best at this. Um, some people will go as far as to weigh them. I'm OCD, but I'm not that OCD. As you can see, it's not an exact science for me. My goal is to just have an even number of rows. I want them to be about a, uh, I want them to be as close to a consistent size and I want to have the same number of rolls per row. That's my goal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let them rise. I'm gonna put a few things away and then I'm gonna start on the meatballs. All right guys, so while I do the bread rolls just a bit bigger than a golf ball size, the meatballs I do a little bit smaller than a golf ball because we have small people and I actually prefer my meatballs smaller as well. With any type of dough or bread or rolls, you want the dough to rise to about double the size that it was when you stopped handling it last before you put it in the oven. This is for most recipes. When making this recipe in a residential oven, you want to set it to 400 degrees, but because it is an RV oven and it doesn't hold its temperature as well, I tend to set it higher. That way, the rolls can set, and then if the temperature drops, it's not as big of a deal. But if you have a lower temperature with bread at the beginning, you're gonna end up with it over rising, which is gonna be a problem in a small oven.
rather than draining the grease into something to have to contain it, I prefer to use paper towels. It's just easier. So you don't have to stir your marinara into the meatballs if you don't want to, um, but that's just what we prefer. We sometimes will keep it separate. Sometimes we'll actually just mix everything together, um, but it's kind of personal preference at this point. Putting butter on the top of your rolls is gonna keep them from being hard and Crunchy, it'll make them super soft. And then also we don't have to put butter on the rolls for the boys inside. So it works. So if you like this type of content, let us know in the comment section below um, so that we can know whether or not to keep making cooking videos. Um, but it is possible to cook in an RV a lot of the meals that you would make in a residential house. Um, I love to cook before and I still love to cook. Uh, so I enjoy sharing these. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks for watching. We're on to the next adventure.